Okay, hello people watching YouTube. Um, today I'm going to go over a couple of tips quickly in GDO Plus that everyone should really find a very useful for saving computational resources and cleaning things up in your simulations. And the first has to do with uh, pruning the betting abstractions that you end up generating for your solver. So if I enter a whole bunch of bet sizings in different spots here, so here I have 25%, 50%, 75%, 100% in a bunch of spots. And um, what you find is when you build the tree, you end up with a bunch of at branches of the tree that you don't really want um, to give to the solver. So some of these include uh, illegal bets. So when you bet full pot here, I've specified a very small raise size, which makes an illegal bet of this raise to 42 because it's under a min raise. So you want to cut those out. Um, as well, you'll end up with a bunch of bets that are very, very close together in size. So you can see this all in is like, you know, 89% of the pot. And there's this bet size of 75% of the pot that quite close together and probably strategically they don't make much of a difference. You end up generating a lot of these. Say for example, I bet six, raise 33. You know, here's another one, 50% of the pot and 61% of the pot. Um, and you really want to cut those out um, when you're building your trees. So how you do that is you enter certain codes in the top right corner here next to this question mark. And if you click the question mark, it'll bring you to some help files that kind of specify what you should be entering here so if you enter a b that specifies a minimum bet size uh, this isn't really useful other than in like limped pots so i don't really use it m is what cuts out um, all the min raises or things that are below min raises in your betting tree and it'll round those up to like to a min raise if you have them r is turns out kind of the default rounding settings in the solver so if you enter r it'll no longer round to like whole numbers i usually use this just for whatever and G is really the code that will save you a whole bunch of RAM. And this is meant for pruning out bet sizes that are very similar in size. So if you enter G11, it'll remove all bets that are within 11% of each other. So in practice, you know, I enter M here, rebuild my tree. And you know, you can see that it's rounded up that bet size now to 48, so that it's a min raise. So that's that. Uh, R doesn't really do much. Then you can see when I entered, say, this G11, now I've saved, I've gone from memory needed from solving from 14 gigabytes now down to 12, so quite a fair amount of settings, um, sorry, RAM savings. But since my bet spacings here are, you know, about 25% of the pot, I can ramp this up even up further to, you know, within 19%. And now the memory needed for solving is all the way down to 7.8. And this is really cleaning up all those kind of nasty all-in sizings for the most part, as well as uh, you know, weird things intersecting each other. Um, and yeah, you can see now that when I bet full pot, now now there's, um, it gets rid of that 75% pot bet sizing. So now it just has that all in there. And generally getting rid of a whole bunch of trash in your trees and, and cleaning things up a bit. So I really encourage you to play around with these codes, find something that works for your trees here. It'll really save you on resources. It's even more helpful, these G codes, when you're using a bunch of mixing matching these settings or specifying bet sizings. Like here, if I use these geometric bet sizing specifiers, uh, like I do a lot in single raise pot betting trees. So like this G2 here as well, maybe for my raise sizes, I'll use like a min raise specifier this 2x instead of you know 25 percent um everywhere and yeah you can see that if i was to delete these codes yeah the memory needed for this tree because i've mixed and matched now i have all these like intersecting bet sizes memory need is 21 gigabytes so if you're doing something like this it's really important you can see the mrg g11 code brings it down to 13 gigabytes then, you know, if I go to 19, 9.5 gigabytes, really. All right. The second tip relates to when you finished your solve and you've only stored basic storage settings. Um, so you've not saved all the turns in river in your simulation. And when you do want to look at the turn results, say here, the Jack of clubs, the solver will actually be solving that in, um, just very, very quickly and displays the results for you. Um, I'm not sure what precision it's solving down to here, but if you want to get higher precision results, you can always click in this top right corner circle of the bedding tree 
and that'll keep on solving here the turn until I click the circle again. So whatever, you know, EV precision I want here. So I'll let it run for a bit. And what you'll find is a lot of the times when you're looking at these turns and rivers and you haven't stored them, is while the EVs might be, you know, reasonably converged for the turns or whatever it's solving it down to, the strategy may not be. So you might end up with these kind of bunch of weird kind of mixes um, in your simulation. So here 10% at this 25% and you know, 40, you know, a couple percent at this 42 bet size. And, and if we stop, uh, sometimes that just goes away as, goes away and it will converge into a much cleaner kind of simulation results. Um, a fair amount of time, the splitting will be legitimate. It'll just um, stay the way it is. But, uh, you know, a fair amount of the time you can clean up your results a bunch here. And now you're just looking at one bet sizing a lot easier to read what hands and, you know, at a glance, look at your strategy here. So um, also something I recommend when looking at simulation results.